Welcome to this course. I'm so excited to be sharing all this information with you and I really hope that you get out of this course what you are expecting to get out of this course. And I really hope that all of the things that I share with you will be pieces of a puzzle. And so you'll notice throughout this course that we're going to have multiple puzzle pieces that all interlock. For module one, we're talking about finding motivation and achieving your goals. Why do we want to lose weight? What is our motivation when we start a weight loss program, start this course, start a new diet? What is our motivation? So before I go any further, just to remind you that I am not a doctor or a registered dietitian, but I do have over 40 years of experience with dieting and reading about diets, being on diets, studying nutrition, and this is the theme throughout my whole life has been related to dieting and finding a solution for weight loss. And since I have found that solution, I am wanting to share that with you and hoping that some of what I share will help you on your journey to achieve your goal weight and to maintain the weight loss. That is the goal ultimately when we start a weight loss program or a diet, etc. What do these nine bags represent related to weight loss? In module four, I'm going to be talking about carbs and sugar. And so for the next nine lessons, up until lesson 10, I'm going to give you an idea of some of the things that we're going to be talking about and the snacks that we are used to eating in everyday life. Most of us are used to eating these snacks. So I picked nine of them and I am going to show you the sugar content in those snacks. You probably have an idea of some snacks and that some are very high in sugar. Even though I've studied this for a while, I was still shocked by the amount of sugar in these snacks. So the first one is a bagel. Bagels have way more sugar than we usually think a bagel would have unless you put jam or honey on it or something like that. That is one of the snacks that I'm going to be talking about. So lesson one, discover your motivation for achieving a healthy weight. What does weight loss success mean? What does it mean to say I have been successful at achieving my goal? Well, in order to find success, we have to say, why are we wanting to find success? What is the ultimate goal? Why do we want to lose weight? Now, there's many, many reasons why I would want to lose weight, why you would want to lose weight or anybody else. And so a really good starting point is to take a piece of paper and you can stop the video if you'd like. Take a piece of paper, write down five things that are health related and then five things that are non-health related. Now, these are some examples that I had when I was losing weight. So I had high blood pressure. I had diverticulitis. I had a resting heart rate, which was really, really high compared to normal. I had a cancer risk. And I also knew that the longer I was overweight and obese, that it was impacting my longevity. There's a lot of scientific studies about that. And if I have grandchildren in the future, I wanted to be around to see them. So that was the point of the longevity for me. Now, non-health related, might be vacation planning for next year. Maybe you want to go on a vacation and you want to wear the bathing suit again. Number two, wear smaller clothes in general. Maybe you remember a time 20, 30 years ago when you did fit into smaller clothes and you remember that and you want to get back to that point. Maybe it was just 10 years ago or five years ago that you were fitting into smaller clothes and you want to get back to that. Maybe those are still in your closet and that's one of the things that motivates you. What about playing sports again? You might have been very athletic in the past when you were 20 or 30 and those things you want to bring back into your life. I know that as you get older, our muscles and our joints maybe don't work as much, but being overweight or obese definitely has impact on our muscles and joints. I found this very, very true. I kept breaking bones when I was obese. I would fall, I couldn't catch myself when I would fall. I broke my nose. I slipped on ice, didn't catch myself. I broke my ankle, I wasn't able to catch myself. So both of those things happened while I was obese. Going back to the playing sports part, you know, if you do remember being more agile, that definitely is easier when you don't have as much weight 
that is putting pressure on your body. And the fifth thing for this particular example was if you want to be able to play with your grandchildren in the future or if you have uh, children still in your house, that you want to be able to play with them. You can't sit down on the floor and play Legos and play games with them if you know you're having your own mobility issues. I found this to be true for myself that I couldn't actually do the same things with my kids. I mean, at that point they were in their 20s, but I couldn't do the same things that I wanted to do because of my weight. So take a piece of paper, write those things down, and just see. It, it might be really eye-opening for you to see the reasons why. And don't be afraid to write anything down. Yeah, it could be fitting in a bikini. That's okay. Put it down. There's a reason why you want that. Don't try to limit yourself or censor yourself in this. It's your list, and you can put that list wherever you want to. But at this point, just make the list. That will help. So I love motivational quotes, inspirational quotes. This one is from Kyle Francis. That risk you're afraid to take could be the one that changes your entire life. There is a risk to going on a weight loss journey. There's a risk because you don't know what it's going to look like in the end. You don't know what it's going to look like in the middle. And there's a risk, but that risk could change your entire life. I'm glad I took the risk. I'm glad I said, this is the last diet I want to be on. And it's totally changed my life. It did change my entire life. Dream body, dream life. Keep your goals in sight. I did not know what the future would look like when I started this last diet. In hindsight, it was the last diet I would ever have to go on. But I didn't know. But I had this dream. And going back to the idea of why we want to do things, the dream of what we want our future to look like. What do we want our body to look like? What do we want our life to look like? What's that dream? And once again, let's not censor ourselves. Let's dream big, dream the impossible, dream whatever we want. It doesn't hurt, does not hurt to dream big. When we create a dream board, I'm sure you've heard of vision boards. This one is called a dream board. What is it going to look like for after you reach your goal weight? And if maybe you've been overweight or obese for a very long time, maybe you forget some of the dreams that you had in the past. Maybe you, you know, have put them on the side and you think, I could never accomplish those things. I, that's just not going to be part of my life. Bring those back, maybe. Bring those dreams back into your foreground and say, oh, maybe I could do this if I lost weight. Maybe I could do this if I was at a healthy weight and feeling healthy again examples of this is how can we get excited about future activities? How can we use the dream board to help us stay motivated? And the dream board can also help us when we're our gratitude journaling in the future. There's a lesson that talks about the gratitude journal and how important it is to be thankful. And another example or another reason for the dream board is to remind ourselves of where we want to go. So it's a future state. And I know we need to be thankful in the present state, which the gratitude journal helps with, but it's good to have that dream board. It's good to have a vision for what we want. We want to be evolving. And the other reason to have a dream board is to inspire ourselves and others. I started a dream board uh, about 10 years ago, and it was really hard to do that dream board or to come up with pictures because I didn't really know what I want. My whole life had been invested in my family. I, I didn't know what I wanted and it was really hard at the beginning and I've added to it and added to it and now it's much more concrete and I change it. I adapt it. I, you know, mine is actually a written one right now but sometimes I'll have pictures I'll print off and put them on my wall. I'm hoping to go to Italy. So this picture my daughter took when she was at a conference in Italy that's helping to motivate me. That's a little part of my dream is to go to Italy. So that kind of a thing that is visual. My dream board right now is actually just words that I put on a great big piece of paper with different colored markers. And I look at it once a month. And I actually have it on my calendar to remind myself to look at it once a month. These are just examples of what you might have on your dream board. Playing with grandkids, playing tennis, going on a vacation, going camping wearing a fun dress at an event, dancing, taking dancing lessons, going to aerobics classes or Pilates classes or yoga classes or spin classes or Zumba classes. And then also, you know, just being able to travel in general, whether it is a vacation or going out for a weekend 
or just traveling in general. Traveling is hard when you are overweight and I discovered that for myself. So these are just you know small examples or some examples of what a dream board could have on it. And if you don't have magazines, we don't have magazines in our house like we used to, or I don't personally, then you know you can do this on your computer. I use Canva all the time so I can make a dream board in Canva, find all these stock photos and create something and that's where I've printed out pictures. I have pr pictures of Italy and Scotland and Ireland, places I want to go to, things I want to do and uh, it's just it's fun. It really is a fun experiment to do. What are some dream board categories? So some of the dream board categories could be family related with a marriage, a partner, a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is, uh, health goals. You could have uh, definitely some health goals um, as a dream for what you wanted to do in, your, in the future, what you want your health to be like. Relationships, going back to family, but maybe apart from family. Family could be kids or not having kids. Uh, giving. Do you want to be able to give certain things and your body, your health is holding you back from that? A career. Maybe a career in something that you didn't have an idea of as an option when you were overweight or when you are overweight or obese. A wealth goal. Maybe you realize, oh, I actually could do certain things if I lost the weight if I became healthier and those two things are very very linked maybe skills maybe you have some skills in certain things that maybe you remember doing when you were you know thinner and you want to be able to bring those skills back maybe you'll learn new skills as you go through this and just knowledge in general I listen to podcasts almost all the time and so I'm always trying to increase my knowledge many different types of podcasts uh, lots of different uh, topics to try to broaden my mind as much as I can. So increasing knowledge can be something that could be on your dream board. Now let's switch gears and let's say what is your why not? We are talking a lot about the why, you know, making a list of the health and non-health related issues. And then now what is our why not? Now what does that mean? So we don't think we can lose weight because Counting calories is boring. Now this long list are things that I have had definitely in my history over those decades of dieting, yo-yo dieting up and down. These were definitely things that would be, why am I going to go off this diet or why do I not even bother? So the big one was counting calories is boring. Counting calories is so tedious. You know, I have to think of math all day long. Diets are expensive. So I'd buy the diet bar, I'd buy the diet drink, I'd, you know, buy the book. I thankfully didn't invest too much in the big weight, you know, weight loss program that everybody knows about. I haven't, I didn't invest in it too much, but I did at one point. So a lot of uh, money and time, let alone all the clothes that I had bought in different sizes throughout the years. It's expensive to go on diets. So we think, Forget it. I don't want to do it anymore. There always seems to be weight loss plateaus. Every diet starts out great. That's why we go on them is you always lose weight right at the beginning and then you plateau and you don't know what to do and you go off the diet. Grocery shopping is boring. So maybe you don't like to cook. That's totally fine. I grew up cooking. I grew up cooking before I even went to school. That was the way my parents raised me and then they encouraged me to go to cooking college so I did. So cooking is a default for me and in order to cook you have to grocery shop. Maybe you don't like to cook. Maybe you'd hate grocery shopping and you know that if you want to get healthy oh you got to make healthy food. So that might be one thing that's like it's not just boring you just hate doing it. And going on that same topic, healthy cooking takes too much time. Maybe you're really busy. Maybe you work shifts and it's like, I don't have time to cook healthy. That's a very legitimate uh, reason for why not, why to not go on a diet. Meal prep takes too much time. There's so many great videos and reels and shorts and Pinterest ideas nowadays about how to do meal prep. It's just, it's everywhere. It's fantastic. I love it. But uh, it might be overwhelming for you and you just think, oh, that just takes too much time because the cooking takes too much time. Healthy food is expensive. Now that, since COVID, that's definitely true and I've discovered that. 
but because I eat less food, I'm not actually holding 80 pounds more on my body. I actually am eating less food, so it is less expensive in that way. But to eat healthy, yes, it can be expensive. But I'm also knowing I'm investing in my health and I hope to extend my life without health issues as long as I can. And so the healthier I am now, the less I'm going to need medication. I've been a lot healthier in the last two years since I've lost the weight and not needed to go to the doctor and get meds, that kind of thing. So healthy eating can be less expensive. But if we're thinking that healthy food is expensive, then we won't do it. And yet we might be spending money on other things such as doctor bills. The family doesn't like eating healthy foods. That could be very true. You know, your family thinks, oh, I got to eat broccoli and Brussels sprouts every meal. Ah, yuck. That can definitely be a reason why. Forget, I don't want to go on a diet again. It's hard to eat healthy when you're traveling. That very much can be a situation that's like, I'm traveling all the time. I have to eat out all the time. How do I eat healthy? So forget it. I don't want to go on a diet. It's too expensive to buy smaller clothes. I literally had to go and buy a whole new wardrobe when I lost the 80 pounds because between 80 pounds, you know, 210 pounds to what I am now, 130 pounds, you can't fit those same clothes. So I did actually have to go and spend some money. Thankfully, I found a place that was inexpensive. I could borrow clothes from my daughter and that made it a little cheaper, but that can be a reason that people think, oh, I've invested all this money in these clothes. I don't wanna waste that money. Well, in the future lessons, we'll talk more about that. So it's too hard to try another diet. So learning about a new diet takes time, takes mental energy, and you don't wanna try it. It's just like, another diet and then what if I fail you know and then people see that I failed on another diet and myself I feel like I failed on another diet another one it's too hard to eat out and stick to a diet it is harder to stick to a diet when you come to a restaurant you sit down you open up the menu and it's like they've chosen the food that you have a choice to eat and maybe it, you don't want to eat any of those foods because you're trying to lose weight and all of them look like the ones that you're going to overeat on or that are way too tempting. So that can definitely be a reason why not to start another diet. New Year's resolutions don't work. I know so many people talk about this and I don't really care one way or the other. If it works for people, that's great. If it doesn't, don't do it. But probably um, 20 out of the 30 uh, years or 40 years, I started dieting, unfortunately, when I was age 12, before I'd even um, entered into high school, the amount of years that I had that resolution was a lot. And so you think, ah, uh, here's another new year coming around. I'm going to fail this diet again. So I'm just not even going to start. And going to, on to that same theme, diets failed in the past, where we feel like, ah, uh, I've got this long list of diets. And I actually listed them out for my book. I listed out all the diets I'd been on, but those were all the ones that people would recognize the name of. I've invented my own diets over the years. I would mix and match from other diets. Like I, I was so, so wanting to fix this problem that I have where I could not stay slim. Okay. Going to the gym takes too much time. Oh my goodness. I have been there, done that. And the amount of money I have invested in gyms over the years, I'm embarrassed to say, because I thought that that would solve the problem because that's what they tell us. Pasta, cereal, and bread are too hard to give up. One of the reasons why I always wanted to go to Italy was I love pasta. I loved pasta, past tense, in the past. And I used to eat it a lot. I love to make pasta, any pasta dish pretty much, uh, breads, my mom grew up on a homestead. She married my dad. My dad um, and her bought a log cabin in the middle of the woods on 180 acres, and that's where I grew up for the first 14 years. And we grew all of our own food pretty much uh, other than wheat. And uh, we had a wheat grinder. And so my mom would make bread from scratch, and it was, you know, chunky. And sometimes we would literally just have bread at the table for dinner and that's what we would eat the whole loaf of bread our family of four. And my mom actually ended up supporting our family while my father was unemployed for three years and she made bread, made cookies and sold it. And that's how she supported our family. So bread 
was a big, big part of my life and I love pasta. So I didn't want to give that up. Desserts are hard to give up. Same thing. I grew up with sugar at every meal and learning how to make desserts for people. I was a cake decorator since age 13. And so I would make desserts for everybody and cakes and birthday cakes. And yeah, that's a really hard one to give up. And we think we have to give it all up. But as you go through this course, you'll see we don't have to give it all up. Uh, another one would be friends are not supportive. What if our friends want to take us out to eat all the time? What if our friends are the ones that are like pushing us to not go on a diet? That can be really hard to deal with. Now it's your turn. Get a piece of paper and write down all the things that you think are the reasons why you don't want to lose weight, you can't lose weight, you just don't want to start on another diet. So turn the video off, take some time and write them all down and just be honest with yourself and say, yeah, this is the reason why. You don't have to solve the problems, just like write them down and say, these are the reasons why I don't wanna go on a diet, why diets failed in the past. Just take some time to really understand this. A lot of this course relates to the mindset behind losing weight and then the practical tools of how to actually lose the weight and keep it off. And so this is part of that mindset part that it's important to understand the way we think, what we've been thinking, and the reasons why. Thanks so much for watching this lesson, and I really hope that in lesson two, when we talk more about health issues, that you're going to see that there is some hope. There's some hope in the future for you to become more healthy on this diet. What does a blood pressure cuff have to do with weight loss? You probably can think of several ideas, and this is what I'm gonna be talking about in lesson two.